my dad was the usual story. Uh, in 1938, uh, the fascist government um, promulgated the racial laws which uh, excluded Jews from all official positions, and that included his uh, uh, position as a director of the uh, Department of Ophthalmology in, in uh, the main hospital in Bergamo. And shortly thereafter, uh, he also uh, was, uh, would have been limited from practicing uh, medicine, uh, treating patients other than Jews. And there were a total of 70 Jews in Pergamo. So there were, his clientele would have disappeared. So he just closed up his uh, practice and uh, we moved out of Bergamo uh, at the end of 38 and uh, went to, to Genoa. Uh, waiting to get a U.S. visa. I left Italy as a very small child, and this was just prior to World War II. And then and during uh, at least the first part of World War II, Italy was the enemy. And uh, it was not only the enemy, but it was also allied with our uh, greatest persecutor, uh, the Nazis. And therefore, I felt uh, very hostile to Italy. And also, uh, uh, given the, uh, the local sentiment during the war and in New England, uh, I was really uh, striving to <laughs> erase my Italian past and become an American, American Jew. And uh, in some sense, I succeeded pretty well. But by the time I had finished college, I realized that there was a lot more to Italy than what I had uh, uh, thought of as a child. And this happened gradually. It wasn't all at once, but actually uh, almost from the end of the war and recognizing and knowing uh, that many of my family that had remained in Italy uh, was saved by uh, non-Jews, by uh, a variety of people, from peasants to uh, people who were well off, and, and by the church, uh, individual uh, nuns and priests. Uh, I s gradually uh, came to accept that uh, uh, it wasn't monolithic and that uh, there were very many very good people. The vast majority of American Jews uh, are uh, from uh, Northern and uh, Eastern Europe, especially Eastern Europe. Uh, an immigration that uh, came uh, uh, during a 40 or 50 year period, uh, starting before the, uh, starting towards the end of the 19th century and going into the first two decades of the 20th century. And uh, therefore, uh, they are all um, pretty much uh, homogeneous uh, and uh, speak Yiddish and so forth. Italian Jews, first of all, uh, as everybody knows, there's a very large Italian uh, population in the United States, particularly in the East Coast. And there's uh, also a very large Jewish population. But that Jewish population is mostly from Eastern and Northern Europe, and there's hardly any Italians. The Italian Jews, which, first of all, the Italian Jews were never a very large population, never have been, and probably never will be, on the order of 30 to 50,000 at the most. Uh, and uh, the ones who came to this country uh, came mostly around uh, the beginning of the Second World War, and some came uh, a little after the Second World War, and there never was more than probably a couple of thousand. Uh, and so uh, it's a very small group. Uh, and, um, and for a long time, there was no uh, recognition that there was such a thing. Um, it took uh, the fact that there was important literary um, uh, developments, uh, in particular the uh, writings. There were several uh, authors that have become famous. Bassani in the Garden of the Finzi Contini, Carlo Levi, in uh, the Christ Stopped at, at Eboli, and then the, the most famous Primo Levi, 
uh, survival in Auschwitz, uh, the periodic table, and many other works. Primo Levi uh, was the husband of my first cousin in Turin. And I first met him in 1948 at my bar mitzvah in Turin. He would send uh, his books to my mother, who was his, uh, his wife's aunt, uh, every time one came out. And uh, um, how has that influenced? Well, I've read all his works, uh, and uh, it has it certainly made me uh, keenly aware of what the persecution, what the Shoah was about, more, more in general than just about Italian Turi. Uh, but he, uh, in, particularly in, in reading the first couple of chapters of uh, the, the periodic table, it gives you a rather um, humorous uh, view of what Italian Jews were all about. There is a tremendous Jewish experience all around the Mediterranean. Spain to begin with, France, uh, the Balkans, uh, obviously Israel, and, and all of North Africa. Um, and they, Egypt, uh, in fact, there was quite a large Italian Jewish uh, settlements in places like Egypt, um, Tunisia, uh, especially Libya, uh, throughout the, uh, I'd say, the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century. Yeah. There are uh, probably uh, 3,000 years of history of Jews in the Mediterranean. There's probably only about 500 years in Eastern Europe. Jews started going to Eastern Europe in large numbers in the 16th century, I believe. Uh, in, uh, in the Mediterranean, well, of course, if you include Israel, it's probably four or 5,000 years. But other parts, uh, well, Egypt also, uh, goes way back <laughs> to, uh, to Joseph and Moses. Uh, although the records are very <laughs> limited, if any. Uh, but uh, recorded history, uh, Jewish history, uh, certainly goes back more than 2,000 years in various parts of the Mediterranean, particularly the Roman Empire. 